Finally, after weeks of anticipation, it's time to get the tomatoes into the ground outside. Nothing quite defines summer like a fresh, juicy, homegrown tomato. So we all love to grow our own tomatoes. They're so much better than what you buy in the shop. <laughs> they seem like they're made of plastic. I'm growing two varieties here primarily. One is Rouge de Marmonde, which I grow as a table tomato. Uh, it's a nice short season tomato here in Tassie and produces really well. The other is Roma, which I grow as a sauce tomato because I try and make my own tomato sauce. Now, I've gone to using these concrete reinforcement trellises over traditional tomato stakes, largely because it uses less tomato stakes to hold those up. And also I have abandoned pruning my tomatoes. Now, I know this goes against some wisdom, but I've found that it really hasn't made a lot of difference to the amount of crop that I actually get. So to me then pruning is a waste of time. And because of that, this type of trellis is much better than a stake. I can just tie the tomato plants to it as they grow. No, I'm not digging fence posts, but when you've got a tomato plant that is this tall, it's really good to plant it very deep. Simply snip off some of these bottom leaves and what it will do when you plant it deep, get it down into the ground up to here, is that it will actually put out more roots, give you a deeper and longer root system that's really nice and ready to go into the soil. And also because it's been in the hothouse and supported by other plants around it, it hasn't been used to the wind. So getting it deep will give it more support and it won't get blown around in the same way. So we fill it back in and a little water and that'll be really happy. Now that I have them all planted, the first thing I'm going to do is give them a little bit of water to settle them in. And this year I'm going to mulch them with green waste compost. In the past I've generally used straw, but I've found that the straw germinates too much wheat and it's a real nuisance pulling all the wheat out. So hopefully the green waste compost will keep the weeds suppressed and also provide some nutrition, particularly potash for the tomatoes, which they will love. I'll stop this one. Yeah. Now I'm up there, John, Daddy. So what I'm doing here is trying to create a deep root watering system. There are various ideas around. I've seen PVC pipe used with holes drilled in. I've seen ag pipe used which already has holes in it. Uh, my thought was here's a waste product otherwise going to be recycled which requires further energy. Drilling a few holes in each side and burying that may allow me to create that system that I want so that I can fill that with water and it will deliver it to the roots. I've placed one in between each plant so that it's watering each way. Whether it will work, this is an experiment, it's the first time I've done it, so you've got to try, we'll see how it goes. Right, not work, Queen. Daddy, I'm trying to tie, pull, tie this up. Now I have a couple of places here that extra to the number of plants that I had. So I'm creating some instant tomato plants from cuttings out of the hothouse. Using those I'll need to again bury them very nice and deep. And I will need to keep them well watered for 
uh, up to about a week depending on the weather that comes along. They will wilt the first couple of days and look like they're going to die but generally they will recover and grow roots and give you a nice quick plant. So they will need water very quickly because they have no root system so they need to be kept really damp straight away. So that completes the icing on the cake and we'll keep this soil nice and moist and supply some nutrition to it having this compost on top. Out of the two cuttings that I've put in here, one is looking quite okay. This is now a couple of days later. The other one is wilted seriously and looks like it's going to fail. There was a difference between those two cuttings. The one that's doing well was from the base of a plant a lateral coming out at the base which I broke off the one that looks like it's going to fail was from higher up on the plant now this has always been my experience in the past too that the ones that come from higher up a plant are much harder to actually get to take whereas the base ones are the most successful and root very readily the ones that I did in the hothouse earlier are now starting to grow quite well obviously have roots they both came from the base of a plant so it's something to remember if you're taking cuttings try and get the ones at the base let them develop a little bit and take them you can get the others to work but they're just a lot harder and more likely to fail adding compost like this is quite an expense but it really is an investment in your soil and it's going to pay you back over time the soil that I started here 10 years ago was this, which is clay, forest soil that's been growing eucalypts for millennia. And the first crops that I put in here were very poor and yellow. And it's only been after now 10 years of developing the soil that I start to get really good results and lush looking crops. If you're actually feeding the soil in this way, you're going to end up building your garden, you're investing in the future of the garden, and you're going to get better and better crops every year.